and we'll go ahead and control pre to implement the new method and so we can see it here at reply and this post reply object is already going to have the post ID on it so if we look back at the reply controller it's going to actually pass up the entire post object which is returned from our post service initially and so we're simply appending the reply content and the, the date to it um, it's also getting past the entire application user object so in our post service we have another very simple task here which is to use our context.post replies and simply add this object to our post replies and any framework will take care of inserting that into the appropriate table and then what I'd like to do here is just await context.savechangesAsync alright so it looks pretty good so let's go ahead and build the project and since everything's building, I'm going to go ahead and make an, a commit here. And then we'll go ahead and start the server up. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and sign in. And then let's go to one of our previous posts here. And let's click our post reply button. Okay, so we get an error here that the suitable constructor type cannot be found for reply controller. So we, I've made that mistake in the past here. We need to head over to our reply controller and make this constructor public. And that's because when we allow Visual Studio to create it, it creates it as protected by default. And so let's go ahead and start our server again. And we'll click the, the same post again. And actually we'll go ahead and make sure we're, we're logged in here. And so we'll click this post and now we'll try to post a reply. And so now we're getting a null reference exception. And I suspect that our user manager is not getting set. So what I'm going to do is close the browser here. And yeah, um, although we created a field for it, we need to go ahead and make sure it gets set in the constructor, of course. OK, so let's go ahead and try again. All right, same deal, we'll sign in here and we'll go to our posts and then try to post reply. And so here we get our simple page, which again needs some styling, but we do have a form and we have the post content and then this message that we're submitting it as uh, the username that we have. And we'll just say like post reply here and try to submit. And so yeah, so now we see our reply out to the page. So once again, we need some styling here to kind of make this look a little bit nicer. But let's make sure we can post a second reply. And so we'll go ahead and submit that. And so yeah, you can see that our replies are now getting posted out to the page underneath the original reply. All right, cool. So the next thing that I'd like to do is to actually try to manage our, our user rating property that's on our application user object. Also, let's go ahead and check this button as well. Okay, so that does take us back to the JavaScript forum. And so let's just go ahead and sign out or we can just close the browser here. Okay, so let's create some way to actually like bump the user's rating when they either make a reply to a post or they make a post. And we'll use that as some way to sort of quantify a user's activity in our forum and, and give them a user rating. So let's go ahead and increment their rating anytime they make a post or they make a reply. And if you recall, in our user service, I'm going to go ahead and close most of these windows, leaving our reply controller open. And we'll go ahead and also open our post controller. And then the last file I'd like to open is our user service. So if we head down into services and check out our application user service, and then we scroll down and we have this increment rating task. So let's go ahead and think about how we might want to increment the rating. And I've provided a slight hint to how I'm going to be doing it here. So we're going to be passing in an ID and a type. And so this is just a simple uh, you know, C-sharp type. And the ID will correspond to the user ID for the user whose rating we'd like to increment. So what we'll do is we'll say if the user is creating a, a post type, then we'll increment their rating a little bit, and then if they're 
uh, posting a reply to someone else's question, then we'll increment their rating uh, perhaps a little bit more. And so it's just, you know, it's more or less for demonstration purposes, just to add a little bit of extra logic here to our application. So what we'll do here is we'll go ahead and grab the user. So we're in the user application user service, so we can just say get by ID, pass it the ID, and just to be clear, I'll make sure that we call this user ID. And then we'll specify some increment. And we'll write a method to actually determine what that is. So we'll delegate the responsibility of getting the increment to a separate function. Um, but we know whatever the increment is, then we're going to actually set the user rating to something new. So we can plus equals the increment. And we'll say await context.savechanges async. And we'll make this task async. Okay, now we'll control period on get increment to actually build out this private method. And you can see I'm gonna plus equals the increment. We may actually want to like return a user rating from this instead of just an int. Um, and in fact, I think I'd like to do that. That way, you know, increment rating doesn't maybe maybe isn't necessarily just a simple add to type function, um, you know, uh, plus equals type function. Let's say you were taking the user's initial rating into consideration before applying um, the rating or something. So yeah, we want increment rating just simply to change the rating of the user and then the specific implementation of that will handle in this uh, method. So instead of get increment, we'll call this we'll call this calculate user rating and we'll call this just update user rating. And so we'll say new rating is equal to calculate user rating. And we'll set the user.rating equal to the new rating. Okay, and so here we'll pass it the type and we'll go ahead and also pass it the user.rating. And so it's getting the type, so either a post or a reply, and it's getting the user rating. And so we're gonna keep things kind of simple. We'll just say like, yeah, if they make a, if they're uh, submitting a post, they get uh, a rating increase of one point regardless of their current rating. And if they make a post reply, then they'll get a, an increase of uh, three points. So we'll set this var inc equal to zero. And then we'll say if type is equal to a type of post, and we'll set ink equal to three. And then if type is a type of post reply, we'll set the increment, sorry, we'll set the increment there to three and we'll set the post type to one. And then we can go ahead and just return user rating plus ink. Okay, so some pretty simplistic logic, but having it structured this way where we have a calculate user rating method um, that we pass the initial user rating to along with the type you know, the type of post that they're making, whether it be a post or a reply, then in this way you have some flexibility with exactly what you do to calculate the user rating. Okay, and then up in our task, I'm just gonna do a very slight refactor here where we'll just set the user.rating equal to calculate user rating, and then go ahead and save the changes. Okay, so let's actually implement this task in our post controller and our reply controller. Okay, so let's go ahead and update our interface to reflect the different uh, type of params that we actually pass this. So we had increment rating here, um, but the way that we actually implemented it was to say that it was actually update user rating, So, and we pass a string and a type still. So let's go ahead and head back here. So we just have to call it update user rating. Okay, and I think I like that better than a method that just says increment user rating at the service layer level. So, all right, so let's go ahead and head into our post controller first, and then down where we're calling add post, um, we even left it to do for us here where we say implement user rating management. I'm gonna go ahead and await user service, which we need to inject. Um, so let's go do that first. Private read only application user, user service, and then in our constructor, we'll go ahead and set that field. 
Okay, so we'll come back down to our method. And then here we'll say await user service dot update user rating. And we need to pass it the user ID. And in this case, we're going to pass it a post type. Okay, so I'm just actually gonna copy this line and then we'll head over into our reply controller. Um, likewise, here we'll need our user service. And then we'll head down to the post method on add reply. And when we await for the add reply method, we'll also now await to update the user rating, except we'll pass it a type of post reply. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. So what we can do now is we can go ahead and make a commit. And then I'm just going to go ahead and start the server up. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and sign in. And then we'll click on settings and just click my profile. And so you can see we have a current rating of zero. So let's go ahead and make a post. So let's make a post in the Haskell forum. All right, it's just so a random post here, and we can go ahead and submit the post. And let's go ahead and take a look at our profile now. We need to actually put the user rating next to the user in the um, on the post as well. But you can see that now we have a rating of one, um, so that's good. So if we go back and we post a reply, this should increment our rating by three. And so now, if we take a look at our profile we have a rating of four. So it looks like it is handling increasing our rating per, per our sort of ultra simplistic algorithm for doing so. All right, so that's, that's looking pretty good. So we are more or less feature complete at this point. We have implemented some search functionality here where we can search for posts. We've implemented user profiles where we can upload user images and we can change them if we like. Uh, so we're setting some breakpoints here. And so that seems to be working properly. Um, you can see that this member says they've been a member since this default date time. We fixed that um, because this user was created before our new login um, method was, before our login method was updated to actually set this to the current date. We have one more kind of small feature that we can work on now if we sign out and sign back in as a, an admin user. And that is now on the settings drop down here, we have the ability to create a forum and we also have this view users um, list. So if we click view users, this is currently going to, um, well, it's actually going to the profile action. So we need to update that um, and create forum is also going to an empty view. So I think we can go ahead and knock those two things out um, very quickly. And then shortly after that, we will go ahead and um, take a look at some testing.